Welcome, I'm Megan Walker and we have reached the letter D in the A to Z of real-time marketing and D is all about delivering text messages. So there's a couple of different options. Um, you can add um, a sender number using the Azure Communication Services preview. Um, at the moment that is only available and supported in the United States. So I am not in the United States, nor is my environment. So I'm going to look at one of the other two options. Um, you can use Twilio or you can use TeleSign if you've got accounts for those. I found Twilio to be very quick and easy to set up in terms of having a test account. So that is what I'm going to use. But the premise, once you've got everything set up, is essentially going to be the same. So we'll walk through a quick setup and then actually creating the text messages. So we'll have a look at that. Okay, so from within the marketing app, we are going to start off in the settings area and we're going to go to the SMS providers option within customer engagement section. And what we need to do is we need to actually set up the text number. So we need to um, link this to our Twilio account in this example. So like I said, we are going to use Twilio for this to walk through. Um, you can use TeleSign, you can use um, wh whatever option is, is makes the most sense for you. But like I said, this is a, a test account that I've got for Twilio, so it's the easiest one for me to use. So then I'm going to pick from TeleSign or Twilio as the provider, and then within your account for that provider, you're going to get some kind of ID and auth token, some kind of um, key that you will be putting in there. So I've added that information, which basically is linking it to my account. Now what I need to do is I need to say, well, what phone number will these text messages come from? So I'm putting in a number that I've got that's assigned to my Twilio account. I'm selecting the type of geo. You could have a toll-free number, you could be using short codes. So I'm using geo. And then we're gonna give it some kind of description. That's what's gonna be shown when we're setting up and creating the text messages. You might have multiple in a dropdown, so that is going to tell your users which account to actually use. Then we're going to go ahead and add that and that's it. We're done. We've added our text number. We've set it up. Like I said, you could set up additional accounts. Now we're able to go ahead and actually start creating a text message. Now, the way in which we create a text message, if we go back into the real-time marketing area, this is going to be similar to how we do emails and set those up. We can use personalization, we can use links, we can use um, emojis, that kind of thing. So if we start off, then we're going to see that provider in the list or the test text message um, that we set up, we're going to be able to pick that sender. So then we can go ahead and actually start typing out the message. What is it that we actually want to be sending to somebody on their phone via a text message? So like I said, we could pick emojis if we wanted to. We can um, add stuff to the text to hopefully make it more engaging, make it more interesting, and hopefully have somebody interact and click on whatever link we're sending or read the information that we're giving to them. So like I said, keep, we can keep typing out. What we can also do is the personalization that we do in an email, we can also do from here as well. So we can go ahead and say, right, well, this variable or this, this piece of personalization, we're going to call it first name. The default value will be high there. So if first name field is empty, shouldn't be, it's a bad database, but if the first name field is empty, we want it to say hi there instead of that. Then I'm going to go ahead and search for the first name and I'm going to select it and then save it. So now we can see that it'll have first name and then it'll actually include whatever's in the text message. So each person is then getting their own personalized text message with their name in it. Now, what we then have is what's the message designation? If it's co commercial, like we have here, then that commercial message means that they have to have opted in in terms of receiving communication from us. What we can also do is we can review this and we can actually do a test send. So if we want to go ahead and see, well, actually, I want to see what it will actually look like on a phone, I can go ahead and do a test send. So the... Um, if we just go ahead and we do test send, well, let's save it first. So then we can go ahead and we can rename it so we can call it something that makes sense so that when we're setting up our journeys, we're able to know which one we need to pick. 
Then we can do a test send. It's going to validate, just like it does with an email, it's going to validate, make sure there's no errors. And then we have to put in an actual real phone number. So we have to use a phone number that um, is, is real or I guess we don't know if it's real or not, but I have to put something in there to be able to receive it. It obviously has to be real. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a phone number. And then because we've added personalization, we need to be able to send something through because this is just a preview. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my name and then I can go ahead and send it. And then that will come through to me. So I can just make sure it looks okay, that the link I put in there, that that works fine, all of that stuff. All right, so that is a commercial text message that we're then going to use to be able to send um, something out that is a marketing type message. It's not anything about their account. It's not something that's critical that they get from us. Once we're ready to use it in a journey, we use the ready to send button, which is again in the outbound markets marketing similar to the going live um, functionality. It makes it ready to be able to use in a journey. So if we go ahead and do a, another one, so with this one, we can do a little bit more personalization. And again, we can do that first name, put in our default value. What should it show if there is no first name? Again, please make sure you have first names in your database, but still just in case in the off chance it's missing. So this is a reminder that your account um, still needs to be updated or whatever that might be. We can put something in there maybe give them a link to a portal that they might need to sign into to be able to go ahead and provide those updates. So whatever that might be. And then this is where that transactional message comes in to where if it's transactional, we're saying that they don't need to have opted in. We're basically saying this is important to their um, account. So we must be able to send it to them. So another way in which we could do use personalization is and we will cover this in a, in a video all on its own is about event triggers is that we can use not only stuff from the, the um, contacts uh, record, but we can also use information from an event trigger. So let's say, for example, we have an option where someone could sign up to get text messages about cases, support tickets that they've opened, or they could get emails. We can then create a text message that will go out when somebody opens up a support case as confirmation. So for this, we are using an event trigger and we're going down to a specific event trigger where we've actually passed through information about a case. So we're going to pass through the case number and the case title. Again, we have the option to set a default value. So there should always be a case number um, and there should always be a case title because those things are required. But if you want to just be sure, then you can put something in as a default. But really, if, if it's a required field, there shouldn't be information without those things filled out. So now what we're doing is we're creating a text message that is, okay, a case has been created. Let's pass through that information from the trigger of when the case is created and pass through that information into the text message. Again, we could use emojis if we wanted to. We can go ahead and save it. We can then do a test send and because we've passed through additional information, we now need a case number in there to fill that value. We also need a case title in there to fill that value so that we can see what it will look like when it's received. So the more personalization you add, then obviously when you're doing a test, you need to be putting in that, that information and filling out those values. So we'll just go ahead and put in a phone number of where it needs to be sent to and send that out. So again, once that's ready to go, if we want to, we can make sure that it's got the correct um, name on the text message, the, the subject, so to speak, so that whenever we're creating a journey, we know which text message that we need to be selecting. Um, so ready to send. If I press ready to send and I want to make that change, that's where my edit button comes into play. So I've already just made it ready to send. I'm gonna sort of take it out of that, chain, make a change to the subject, and then I can go ahead and do um, save and ready to send again. So now I've got those text messages that I'm then able to go ahead and actually use in my journey when we get to that point and put it all together. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is text messaging something that you've been waiting for? Are you ready to start using it? Let me know what you think. 
Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.